Here I am, I'm actually in the Sherborne Brook, and it's the most exquisite night. It's very cold, but we've got a full moon up there almost, and, and the, the river's just trickling past me. Perfect winter's night. Now, you may remember that back in Autumn Watch, we kind of delved into the magical underwater world of the brown trout, and I fulfilled a childhood dream. We do, weren't sure whether the trout, we could find the trout, so I got dressed up in this very elegant clothes to try to find them. I wanted to enter the actual world of them. There they are. And I got very, very overexcited. Oh! Oh, a two! Now, there weren't just a, a couple of trout, there was a whole shoal of them. These are brown trout, and I was, then began to speculate that in Winter Watch, where would they start to lay their eggs? And I thought I had found the perfect spot, the perfect substrate for them. Mind you, it turned out I was completely wrong. Well, not completely wrong, because I'm now about a kilometre downstream from where I thought that those trout would lay their eggs. I want to show you something very curious. I don't know if you can see this. If you look down in the water here, the, the substrate is quite sort of... Oh, oh that's my sweater gone. <laughs> it's, it's really dark. These pebbles are really, really dark there, the gravel. But now, if I move out, you can see these patches much, much lighter like that. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can. But it, oh, look, it's steaming now. It's getting so cold. But during the day, those patches of light and dark are really, really obvious. So what is doing this? Now, can you see? This is where I'm standing now during the day. Look, you can see that very, very clear, light-coloured area. And there are also... Now, look closely. Can you see in the middle of the frame, there are some trout? And one of them is doing something rather curious. Now, what it, what's happening here, and what's, it's probably almost finished now, is that the brown trout, the females, come to these sort of areas and they clean the gravel. They get rid of all the silt. They use the, their tail and they bash it up and down in a muscular manner and they clear all of this. So not one trout's done that, but quite a few of them have done that. They call it a red. R-E-double-D, -D, and it's sort of an ancient word to meaning to tidy up or to clean. And you can see what they've done here. Now, once the female has done that and tidied up uh, and cleaned it all, then the next stage of the process of reproduction takes place. The males arrive. Now, here's the female with a male with her. You can see what she's doing, see exactly how she's cleaning that silt out of the gravel. Now, the male has a, a difficult job here because he's got to try to encourage the female to spawn. And he does that by gently tapping. You can just see him behind doing that, tapping her flank with his nose. And he'll come around to the other side in a minute and he'll just gently tap again. Here he comes, just tapping her lateral line, trying to encourage her to spawn. Once she does spawn, he will then, uh, he'll then fertilise the eggs and she'll cover the eggs up with gravel. Of course, He's not the only one there. Now the males, he's very subtle, this behaviour. He's got to try and show off to the other and drive the other males off. He does that by erecting his dorsal fin, trying to uh, opening his mouth, trying to make himself look really, really big and threatening and drive the others off. They actually have a little bite at each other. She's still carrying on, getting that red ready for the eggs to be laid in there. And the males sort of, they sort of parallel walk, almost like we've seen red deer doing. And look at this. What a waste of time for those lads, because there was a big, big brown trout male waiting in the wings, and he's come in. So the, the male has to be with the female on the red all the time, because the minute she lays those eggs, he's got to try and fertilise them. But what do the eggs look like? Well, they're absolutely beautiful. Do you see that? Those are genuine trout eggs, and they look like little orange jewels there. But imagine if she laid those eggs directly into the water here, they're so small they'd just be washed away instantaneously. So, all this business with cleaning the gravel, and let me just put some water in this and you can see it clearly. This is what's going on underwater. 
Now you can see here are the eggs. They are actual eggs. There's a sweeties to represent them. But what's happened is they're being trapped now in the gravel that she's the female trout's pushed over the top of it. The eggs are trapped, but it's nice and clean so the water can just travel through, oxygenating those eggs as they develop. So that's the whole process there. So let's see what happens once she has laid the eggs. Here they are, and you can see the little fish inside. Just see the eyes. Here it is starting to emerge. Can you see the heart there just beating away? And there's a large yolk sac there, and the little tiny trout's gonna live off that yolk sac to begin with. It gradually absorbs it. You can see it's getting bigger now. Now it's gonna start looking for food, hunting for food. And there it is. They'll just snap away at any little thing that passes by. Now the trout here that's made these, they're very small. They might lay sort of 100 up to 300 eggs. Uh, down there and it'll take quite a few months for them to develop quite slowly dependent on the temperature of the water but when they do hatch out hopefully there'll be lots of little crustaceans for them to eat so if you go down to your river and you see this strange pattern of the dark and the light there you'll now know what made it